I just decided to go on a diet. Uh, I made that decision immediately after seeing a picture of myself. Uh, it, was taken, it was taken from the side uh, when I was not wearing a shirt or sucking in my gut or aware that pictures were being taken. <laughs> and uh, that's when I realized that my front profile uh, does not match my side profile. <laughs> uh, it turns out from the front, I look like a dude who lifts weights. Uh, from the side, I look like a dude who shouldn't because it's probably bad for the baby. I, uh, I blame my fiance. Uh, I feel like I get a lot of mixed messages regarding nutrition at home. Like, she likes to lecture me about healthy eating, which would come across a lot more genuine if she didn't also like to constantly bake me delicious treats. <laughs> which I, I guess is different instincts inside of her. Like, part of her uh, wants me to be very healthy so I can live a long time and she doesn't have to die alone. <laughs> but another part of her wants to fatten me up just enough so that no other woman will ever love me. <laughs> But it is ridiculous. Like, she'll make me like my favorite cookies. Uh, I'll start to eat them, and then she'll say mean things to me. She'll be like, Dan, Dan what are you doing? Just, just stop it. S seriously, how many of those are you going to have today? I, I, I was going for all of them. Uh, I thought these were delicious cookies. I didn't realize you would bake me shame biscuits and guilt wafers. <laughs> I tease her, but we get along very well. We don't argue very much. And usually when we do, it's just like communication stuff, which is every relationship. Uh, like our main argument by far is she feels like I don't listen enough to her. And I, uh, I don't care about that. <laughs> like, I, like I could definitely uh, you know, listen more. I could definitely work on more effective listening. And I will uh, when she works on telling better, shorter stories. <laughs> Like, why is it always the listener's fault? That makes no sense. <laughs> like, people love a good story. Human beings throughout history, every culture, have loved to be captivated by a good tale. If someone consistently doesn't love your stories, well, maybe you're no Stephen King, okay? <laughs> Let's try less details, more action, wrap it up here and there. <laughs> she's always telling me, she's like, are you even listening to me right now? No, how could I be? <laughs> You've been talking for 25 minutes straight about some lady at work I've never met having boring problems I don't care about. <laughs> If this was a channel, I would have changed it 25 minutes ago. <laughs> I have a nine-year-old son, Kyler. I have a seven-year-old daughter, Monroe. They're, they're great kids. They're, they're happy. They're healthy. They're smart, which is the one thing I would kind of just, you know, hmm, just crank down a bit. Uh, <laughs> like, smart kids are a lot of work. Yeah. yeah. Do you have them? Yeah. Yeah. So do you have them? You know. Right? They got a lot of questions. They like activities. Like to go outside. They are rarely, if ever, interested in just quietly laying on the couch and patiently watching an eight-hour Criminal Minds marathon. <laughs> and, that, and that gets old, you know? But sometimes I get jealous when I'm at the food court at the mall or Chuck E. Cheese, and I, I see a couple dumb kids, and I think, that's a sweet life right there. <laughs> and, uh, some, sometimes I fantasize about a couple just easily pleased, glossy-eyed little mouth breeders I could just throw in front of a Spongebob marathon with some string cheese and some juice boxes and carpe diem, the day is mine. <laughs> My son, uh, he skipped the second grade. When he was eight years old, he was tested and we found out that he was reading at a 12th grade level. And I was happy for him, but I was a little sad for me. <laughs> I, think, I think every good parent wants their kids to eventually accomplish things they weren't able to, but I'll tell you this, uh, not when they're eight. <laughs> Here's what I like about it. I don't know for sure that I read at a 12th grade level. Like, I assume I do, but I've never been tested. And I'm never getting tested now. I'll be emotionally crippled. Like, if I took the same test that he took when he was eight and he got a 12, what if I took that tomorrow and got like a five? I'd probably panic, take drastic measures, paint his room with as much lead as I could get my hands on. <laughs> Make sure he eats off aluminum for the rest of his childhood. He says, Dad, why does this fish taste like mercury? Because I gotta narrow the gap, that's why. <laughs> You'll stop getting mercury fish when you stop knowing that the fish tastes like mercury. Think about that, Professor. <laughs> hey, thank you guys so much, that was a lot of fun. Hey, thanks for watching. Be sure to click subscribe to see even more great Conan clips.
You may now return to your pirated movies and creepy Japanese pornography.